All right, we find myself again. Welcome, welcome to our weekly training. I've got a few things in store for you uh, that I want to go over. First and foremost, I'll get that started for you. Um, what could go wrong in escrow? Uh, so I was just having this conversation and I wanted it to step in here and feed you guys a little bit of info on that and uh, three things I want to cover. What could go wrong, how to avoid it, and then how to uh, solve it is the best way to, <laughs> to put that one. Um, like, who are you when something happens, right? Uh, so first and foremost, um, I want to welcome those that are brand new to the group. Um, I was just on a call and thought I would share. Uh, and just to show you how focused I am into serving and helping you guys inside of this group, I'm giving you like straight out of the gate, having a conversation about escrow and then turning around and then sharing it with you guys. Because if one person wants to know, I'm sure many want to know, right? Um, and those of you that have been in real estate for a little while, you know that real estate is not all sunshine and roses and rainbows and uh, whatever, uh, unicorns. It is, it is fun. It is work. It is rewarding big time. Um, but it's not always easy. It's not always easy, especially if you're doing it by yourself. And those of you that have closed on a few properties, so I help train on beginning, intermediate, and scale, right? So it was talking to a lady about scaling her portfolio. Uh, she's wanting traction to be able to uh, move forward. And I get it. Sometimes she's just like, what is like my next step? I've done this, I've done that, and now what? So it could be confusing. It could be uh, not just confusing, but... Uh, you could be tapped out going to the bank and traditionally trying to find funds to be able to do more properties. Uh, what is the best tax advantage? What is the best uh, wealth strategy for, for your company? Okay. Um, so at that level, you're going to, you're going to understand where I'm coming from today because escrow doesn't always go as planned. And those of you that are absolute beginners, right? Escrow is um, in the third party that holds all the monies according to what the seller wants to do and what the buyer wants to do and what the title company finds, it all goes through escrow and is distributed accordingly, okay? So if you don't know what escrow is, there's tons of tons of info out there for you to get educated in my trainings. In the guide section, you can get into the trainings. There's so much for you to learn. Um, but right now I'm gonna tell you some of the things that have gone wrong, right? What could go wrong in escrow? Uh, and those of you that don't know me quite yet, um, my name is Joanna Wright, founder of Bottom Line Wealth, and I help newbies, intermittent and scale um, investors create wealth in real estate and keep more of the money they make. Because there's no sense in uh, keeping all of the, or making any money if you can't keep the money, right? So I geek out on the tax and legal side. Um, I've been in this business since 2000. I've been living off of real estate since 2000. And again, it's not all sunshine and roses, but it's been super, super rewarding. Um, so I've learned a few things along the road and that's what I like to share with you guys. And those of you that have stepped in to be my clients, that's what I mentor you on is what I know. I'm in the trenches, just bought two uh, last month. And that's something I want to bring up actually today as one of the things that go wrong with, wrong with escrow. Um, I'll give you that as one of my stories. But that is just me in a nutshell. Uh, I'm a big giver. Uh, I wanna make sure everyone has what they need and everyone is seen and heard um, so that you can make that next step, whatever it is for you, whatever that next step is. Um, that's what I wanna give. So type in the comments. Um, if there is a particular question that you have that has been burning and you're trying to get answers to, just type it in the comments. And if you're brand new, just put new, uh, new in the comments. And if you're seasoned, go ahead and put an S in the, in the comments, season. So I know who I'm talking to and can gear more conversation pieces towards 
towards each side, right? And then the ones in the middle get the benefits of both sides, right? Um, there are a lot of things that I cover for uh, newbies that scale people might be like, well, that's elementary, right? But no, watch how I watch how I turn it into something that's more valuable uh, to a person who's scaling that is not considering the basics, right? So, um, and again, this is gonna come back to what could go wrong in escrow. Um, you might have a little experience, but some of the experiences that you've had, you have not experienced the serious south sideways escrow yet, okay? I've had a few of those. I've, I've actually lost track of how many transactions I've done over the years. Um, I do multiple transactions, sometimes per month, sometimes per quarter, per year, whatever it is, happens to be scaling that, that year, selling, buying, whatever I'm doing. Um, add that times 20. So uh, anyway, so what could go wrong in escrow is many things. The very first thing is uh, your contract. Okay, your contract. Is your contract written clearly? Uh, because if it's not, and those of you that use a state contract, that's great. Um, I actually promote using a state contract because it keeps the buyer as safe as possible, more so than the seller. So there is that. And then the um, whatever special instructions you have, like I have particular verbiage that I slide in to the contract. Um, you know, like contingencies and, uh, you know, should something go south? If I'm doing a creative deal, like it's an addendum that's attached, explaining everything that I want to do, seller financing, subject to, whatever it is, but it's specific instructions, right? So it all starts with the contract, okay? Actually, it all starts with the conversation, right? And that that conversation that you agreed upon with the seller is then translated into the contract so that the title and escrow understand it. Now, whether you're using a realtor, you're going directly to seller, you know, it doesn't even matter. There's clarity that needs to happen. And that's what's missing most of the time when something goes south, okay, is the clarity's not there. Uh, or the communication during it's not there, okay? I've had many realtors, they just think once it's in escrow that they just throw their hands up and go, I'm on to the next one because that one's gonna close. No, 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 you still need to nurture it through escrow, show at the table, show up at the table, make sure the seller's getting everything that they need, right? Um, so I've had many realtors just sort of go, bye bye and then just say thank you at the end, you know, when they get their check. And uh, so left to my own devices to make sure escrow and title work uh, is become a little bit of an expertise for me. <laughs> and I'm a licensed realtor, so I'm not fashion realtors, just so that you know. Um, but there is a lot of realtors that do act that way. I've experienced it, okay? Um, I nurture all the way through, okay? I don't practice being a realtor anymore, but I mean, I would nurture all the way through. Um, so I just think that's good customer service. Uh, anyway, so, uh, that is one communication title can also be an issue. It, you know, one of the things that, um, would make the escrow go south. And that is actually the number one thing that happened on my last two, which is why it's the very first thing I'm addressing because it's top of mind. Uh, the last two transactions I had title was just horrible they're like oh no it's this price oh no it's that price for transfer tax okay well they didn't have their data understood and complete so escrow looked even worse because they kept changing it um and it took them a while to do it each time so what could have been a 10-day escrow ended up being a um two-month escrow <laughs> just saying so <clears throat> And I'm bringing this up too, because as an example, because I watched how my seller 
reacted like curse words um just flipping her lid right just flipping her lid uh joanna i didn't agree to this this was supposed to be closed already blah 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 blah, blah. and totally out of my control um doing my best to make title perform okay title and escrow perform so she uh was more pissed obvious it was clear that it was an escrow and title problem it wasn't something of my doing the only thing that she was mad about was the timeline that i could not help uh typically it goes really quick everybody makes their money close deal win-win everybody's good right not this case <laughs> <laughs> so title is the number one thing please i could do my five day challenge those of you that have been through it know that day four is all about team if you're not in relationship this was a brand new title company that was referred to me by a brand new transaction coordinator that i have which is another person on the list here um not that one transaction coordinator right um everything was brand new so they were not you know team that I normally work with there's a lot of not normals in my life because I used to do everything in California uh now I do it nationwide okay so there's a lot of not normal team that I have uh so this transaction coordinator was awesome though I gotta tell you this transaction coordinator was awesome she handled the best she could she is apologizing for the downfall of the title and escrow company. Um, and they've made um, actions to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Great. So I'm staying with the transaction coordinator and never using that title and escrow company again. It makes perfect sense, right? Uh, anyways, so your transaction coordinator could be your goddess, your god, whatever uh, male, female you want to refer to as. Um, they're just worth their weight in gold. Totally. If you don't have a transaction coordinator, get one. They do all the paperwork for you. Uh, and me and my busy, busy life, when you're just start, okay, wait, let me back up. When you're just starting out, you should do all the paperwork yourself. You're like, but Julian, I don't have time. Make the time because you need to learn the paperwork. Okay, you don't know what needs correcting, you don't know what needs protecting, you don't know what needs certain things if you don't understand the paperwork. So get to know the paperwork. Um, that was more of a scale thing to say, get a transaction coordinator. Uh, once you've done a few of them and you understand um, the paperwork, then get a transaction coordinator, right? Uh, or if you're like, I really need that leverage, Joanna, I get it. Make sure you know every single detail that, that transaction coordinator is taking you through uh, because you need to learn it. You need to know why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. How about that? Uh, so <clears throat> transaction coordinator is the other thing that could go wrong. Maybe they don't get the documents out in time. Things go awry. Um, but they happen to be absolutely fabulous in this particular transaction that went south because of title and escrow. So um, it's just another thing to add to the list. The seller could be the problem to the escrow. So once you get into escrow, they could lag in all the things that they're supposed to do. Um, they just, they kind of are almost like the realtor, uh, a typical realtor that just goes, oh, we're in contract, we're good. And they don't walk through the process. So a seller's, the seller's expecting the realtor to do everything, but there's a lot of things the seller still needs to do. And sometimes they're not very timely and it extends the escrow process. So the seller could be a part of this. Uh, the other thing I have here is inspections. So now you're going through and uh, they say that home inspectors are the death of all deals, right? So um, who here's had a home inspection? Just type inspection in the comments and they they just go after every little thing and all of a sudden it's 30,000 in damages and you're like whoa um didn't expect all of that and here we are back at the negotiations table going oh I didn't expect all that 
So um, it's known as inspectors are known as the killer of all deals. Okay, because they come up with an outlandish list of things, and sometimes it's very overpriced of what it would cost. Um, but they're important to the process, especially if your brand's making it and you don't know. Um, I typically use a pest inspection. Uh, when I first started, that's what I would use. Um, now I can go in there myself. I've done so many flips, uh, so many houses, close on so many deals. Like I could just walk in a room and like 10 minutes know exactly what needs to happen. Um, so with experience, you get to know a little bit more. I still have a contractor give me a bid. I still have, you know, repairs that need to be uh, addressed. And then I have like a second and third pair of eyes on that to see what I see. I am obviously not the contractor. I'm not licensed. I expect that data from a contractor because I'm not going to swing the hammer, right? So I expect a contractor to get in there and give me the data that's needed, that they agree upon, that they will cover so that I can get my end result, okay? So inspections can go completely south. So don't just think just because you're in escrow, you have a signed contract, you're in escrow, you can totally fall apart after inspections, okay? So another thing is, uh, well, we addressed this was escrow. Um, but so title and escrow are separate. Um, in California, it's the same building. You don't even know it's different. Okay. In Pennsylvania, it's an attorney state. So know the state that you're in if you have an attorney state or a regular company title and escrow. We have an abstract that um, is a sister company of like, uh, the major what brands like uh, First American Title or Republic, all of that. Um, and they're called abstract companies out here. The attorneys search title and make sure it's clean. Yeah. And then it's separate from the escrow. So you have to have an attorney represent you um, for your paperwork. Okay. So there is um, know what you're in. Right. So title and escrow can go awry. The buyer. Okay. So typically, if you all are here with me, you're the buyer. Um, but a buyer can be a pain in the ass. Right. So me selling properties too. I buy and sell all the time. I'm investing across the nation. Um, right now I have one listed. So now I'm dealing with buyers currently. And they could be a pain in the rear. But what about this? What about that? Um, that can make it go south because if you use a state contract, which is good if you're a buyer, um, if you use a state contract, it keeps the buyer more safe than it does the seller. I don't know if you've ever really read the contract, if you've never read a state contract, get a hold of the state contract, uh, and read it, right? Maybe call your realtor, build that relationship and say, Hey, can you send me a blank contract? I want to read it. Right. Make sure that their uh, stuff is not on there. They don't want to get in trouble or anything like that. Um, but they could help walk you through the contract and go, this is how this works, right? A realtor would be happy to do that and help you get a hold of the house. Um, that's how you could build a relationship too, okay? Again, day four. It all, the whole world of real estate balances on day four of my challenge. Uh, so if you've ever gone through it, just and if you go, those of you that have the recording, um, view day four again about how important it is to build team, get to know them. I'm giving you uh, examples so that you can actually connect with them and say, hey, you know, use it as a, a reason to connect. Okay. Um, so yeah, realtors can be the burden of actual the contract, right? So I do a lot of creative real estate investing. And if the realtor does not understand what I'm doing, nine times out of 10, they blow it. They just do. They don't understand the contract. They don't understand the creative side of it. They have their traditional realtor hat on, and it's really hard to take it off and help them understand what I'm trying to accomplish. So, and not even just my realtor, what I'm trying to work with, but the seller's realtor, like the listing agent or vice versa, whatever it is. When you have more than one realtor in the room, it's a different answer every single time. And then the seller gets confused and goes, 
I'm scared now. I don't know what to do. A confused mind will shut down because the realtors made it complicated, right? So anyways, those are some of the things that can go wrong in escrow. It is my job as a mentor to keep my clients safe. I walk them through uh, each of their escrows. All of their contracts come past my desk. Um, it is important to me to give what I didn't have when I first started was somebody to actually keep me safe. And uh, and creative, creative is a bonus. Being creative is a bonus to it all. But, but being safe is so important, right? Um, making sure that you're not caught up in a contract that you can't get out of. And then making sure everyone performs the way that they should. Making sure you can get a hold of me 24 seven when you're in the middle of escrow, if you're my client, um, so that you're not freaking out and um, talking you off the fence, right? Like, because uh, it can be really frustrating. And I remember when I signed my first contract, I went in around the building, my first investment, my first investment property I purchased was in Nampa, Idaho. And I walked around that building 17 times. It was in an industrial park where escrow was. And I walked around it like 17 times going, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And um, thank goodness for mentors that kept me safe, walked me through the whole process, talked me off the fence and said, we got you, let's go. Signed that paper and I bought a property in Napa, Idaho. And it was the best decision I ever made because when you do something that dramatic, everything else is just generic. <laughs> Buying properties to me is, it's just a normal way of life now. And uh, my very first property, I dove into the deep end, right? Just submerged myself. So uh, anyways, I'm here to be able to keep my clients safe. And some of the things that come up when I'm uh, having a conversation, I like to share with the group here so that you guys get an idea of what to look for. Okay, so Joanna said this about a contract, you know, and be able to... Um, reference right anyway so i hope you're having a beautiful day it was a little long-winded this one but there was so much that i wanted to cover and make sure that you got the best let me know that you got value in the comments uh and then i will see you in the next training bye